go where you might not have thought you would go. Hey, man. Hey! Uh, you wouldn't be part of EOS, would you? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Um, what's your name? I'm Chris. Chris from where? Solutions for Change. What does that do? Well, we're the only organization in the country that solves family homelessness on the EOS platform. But, you know, we're as a nonprofit organization, you know, we don't think like a nonprofit. We think of for impact. So when I look at EOS, it's all about impact. So we work for the Chance Mantillon Group at UBS Private Wealth Management. I go out and help owners merge their business and personal goals and make work optional. Hired our integrator, Catherine, here, or implementer. Get in here! Catherine. You're like standing on the side, That's Catherine. Game Catherine. Catherine. What has been the most insightful part of the process? Working with business owners through the Exit Planning Institute. We're both on the board of the Southeast Michigan chapter. Oh. We have a lot of fun together yeah. working right. with business owners. So that's how we got to know Catherine. That's yeah. how we're kind of connecting all the dots. And okay, wait, why, why is Catherine so great, Catherine the Great. She holds us accountable. She really the meshes with the team very well. Okay, if you're an animal, what are you? Which animal are you? Well, I, wa I want to say that I'm like a cheetah or something sharp, but I'm actually a squirrel. I'm sure. Yeah, okay, all right, good. Because the cheetah is not an option at this yeah, at this yeah. conference. And, and if you were a pet, what kind of pet would you be? I'd be a shark. If you were an animal of this suit, what would you be? I would totally be the sacred cow. Why? Ooh, no one picks that. This is what she's so unique. She's like a snowflake. What is your superpower? I love people. I love trying to figure out people's superpowers, their unique abilities, their great gifts. Okay, do me, do me, do me. What's mine? What's mine? <laughs> the jumping. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is good. To the, what went to the want? visionary masterclass yesterday. Okay. Okay. I learned how to seriously upgrade my skills. I learned a very, very, you know, increased self-awareness okay. of some of my blind spots, okay. challenges. Okay. Okay. Comfortability with my superpowers, working better with my integrator, who's went through the masterclass and is in forum. Wow. I'm hungry for a forum for visionaries. Okay. I'm, we're working. We're working on it. We're working. We're working I on that. Eric, cool. how are you, Eric? I'm great. Um, what's going on for you today? We're gonna have lots of interaction with our clients, helping them understand their strengths, and then Stephanie and I are doing a presentation this afternoon. The topic's all about using your strengths to apply it for increased productivity in the workplace. Okay, and, and I learned so much. Like it was the most meaningful conference I've ever. Yay! Been She and I never get to talk except for really public moments where I put her on camera <laughs> and uh, broadcast her to the world. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? Engaging with this community. What are you most looking forward to at this conference? The implementers, I say they're... They're, they're pretty cool. They're colorful people. They're colorful people. Yeah, they're unique. They all have some amazing yeah. life experience that led them to this, and we, we know a bunch of them, and we like Hi. to meet them. Take the, the, the sessions you thought you were going to do take at least two or three of them and switch them at the last minute to whatever's on your mind at that point. Ch go challenge yourself. Go, yes, go with Look the flow. Look at you. That was brilliant. Hi. Yep, 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 right. yep. Okay, okay, we're going to start, we're, we're going to start. Gonna, we're, we're leading a jumping session. Pump, you're a very Sorry. Hi, hi. Oh. I love your choice of t-shirts. All right, you guys, what are you most looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to learning and connecting and meeting with people. I mean, you always can just learn, 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 learn and, and connect. connect. How many years have you been a sponsor? This is, ooh, five years, I think. This is our sixth year of the conference, maybe? Wow, you, and you keep coming back for more. Jonathan Ronzio, co-founder and CMO of Trainual. Are you, like, more visionary or more integrator? I'm kind of like a, a, a vision of integrator. A integrator! We're so excited to have you as a sponsor. Well, baby, let me show you this is how you do it. I love what I do. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Mark, give us some a final piece of advice for people who are attending the conference for the first time. Release your inhibitions and go where you might not have thought you would go. Hey, fam. Hi. You what? wouldn't be part of EOS, would you? <laughs> how did you know? Um, what's your name? I'm Chris. Chris from where? Solutions for Change. What does that do? Well, we're the only organization in the country that solves family homelessness on the EOS platform. But, you know, we're as a nonprofit organization, you know, we don't think like a nonprofit. We think of for impact. So when I look at EOS, it's all about impact. Oh so we work for the Chance Mantillon Group at UBS Private Wealth Management. I go out and help owners merge their business and personal goals and make work optional. 
hired our integrator, Catherine, here, or implementer. Get in here! Catherine. You're like standing on the side, That's Catherine. Game That's right. Catherine. What has been the most insightful part of the process? Working with business owners through the Exit Planning Institute. We're both on the board of the Southeast Michigan chapter. Oh, we have a lot of fun together working right. with business. Yeah. So that's how we got to know Catherine. That's yeah. how we're kind of connecting all the dots. And okay, wait, why, why is Catherine so great? Catherine the Great. She holds us accountable. She really it meshes with the team very well. Okay, if you're an animal, what are you? Which animal are you? Well, I, wa I want to say that I'm like a cheetah or something sharp, but I'm actually a squirrel. I'm sure. See, okay, all right, good. Because a cheetah is not an option at this yeah, yeah, at this yeah. conference. And, and if you were a pet, what kind of pet would you be? I'd be a shark. If you were an animal of this suit, what would you be? I would totally be the sacred cow. Why? Ooh, no one picks that. This is why she's so unique. She's like a snowflake. What is your superpower? I love people. I love trying to figure out people's superpowers, their unique abilities, their great gifts. Okay, do me, do me, do me. What's mine? What's mine? <laughs> but jumping, jumping. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is good. To the, what did you the learn? Visionary Masterclass yesterday. Okay. Okay. I learned how to seriously upgrade my skills. I learned a very, very, you know, increased self-awareness okay. of some of my blind spots, okay. challenges. Okay. okay. Comfortability with my superpowers, working better with my integrator, who's went through the masterclass and is in forum. Wow. I'm hungry for a forum for visionaries. Okay. I'm, we're working. We're working on it. We're working. We're working I on that. Eric, good. how are you, Eric? I'm great. Um, what's going on for you today? We're gonna have lots of interaction with our clients, helping them understand their strengths, and then Stephanie and I are doing a presentation this afternoon. Topic's all about using your strengths to apply it for increased productivity in the workplace. Okay, and I learned so much. Like it was the most meaningful conference I've ever Yay! been to. She and I never get to talk except for really public moments where I put her on camera and uh, broadcast her to the world. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? Engaging with this community. What are you most looking forward to at this conference? The implementers, I say they're... They're, they're pretty cool. They're colorful people. They're colorful. Yeah, they're unique. They all have some amazing yeah. life experience that led them to this, and we, we know a bunch of them, and we like all to meet right. them. Take the, the, the sessions you thought you were going to do and take at least two or three of them and switch them at the last minute to whatever's on your mind at that point. Go Challenge yourself. Go, yes, go with the Look flow. Look at you. That was brilliant. about entrepreneurs who rise to the occasion, well, you're to be determined still, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for their companies time and time again, like over and over again, never stop rising, and like all about game-changing mo moments. Okay. All okay. right? Yeah. Just making sure you know why you're here, all yeah, right? Yeah, that's good to know. Well, I wish somebody would have told me before we got here. It's too late. <laughs> okay. My name is Pam Kosanke. I am your host of the EOS podcast, all right? We run on. Thank you, crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are live at the EOS Conference 2024. Peanut Gallery, stop, 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 stop. Um, this is a live audience for the first time. We're so excited. And Travis, you're like the guinea pig. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad thanks to, for playing. Thanks yeah, for playing. Happy to be here. My guest is Travis Richards, CEO of Catco, a company that produces catalytic, catalytic heaters. That's right. What the hell are those? But we'll figure it out. We'll later. figure it out, yeah. Uh, providing safe, flameless heat. Suitable for almost any environment. Any environment, for real? Yeah, yeah. Hazardous, explosive, Mars? any environment. There's no oxygen there, so probably not there. We should maybe change that tagline if okay. we're going to well, be more specific. Yeah. Any environment on Earth. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, we'll just add that. I'll put on <laughs> there Earth. There you go. There you go. They're a family business, all right, spanning three generations. You've been at this, so you inherited it. You didn't, did you earn it or did you inherit it? I bought it, so <laughs> I mean, it's like. Well, they, we'll get into <laughs> we'll that. Get into we'll that. get into that. <laughs> All right, three generations of the natural gas industry known for personalized service, custom solutions, and short lead times. I, okay, that's important, we gotta Here's, find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll figure that out. Okay, with degrees in both civil engineering and industrial distribution, Travis is a total professional nerd, and I <laughs> love, love geeks, love it. And you are a member of the Air Force. 
I was. Yeah, I would be in the Space Force now, actually. That's Space how big of a nerd Force. I am. Yeah, so like. So it was appropriate to talk about Mars right away. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're just so like I'm right so in my wheelhouse. This. Oh it's my God. I also, I know two NASA astronauts personally. Are you jealous? Uh, very, yeah. I'll tell you all about it. Um, and now you're the head of CatCo, all right? And it says Travis redefines opportunity and growth. What does that mean? Uh, you're redefining it? Yeah, I mean, what was it before? <laughs> that's a good. That, that's a great question. Look, so, I'm just reading off your website. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Who that's writes on, your website? I don't think that that's our copy. I, I think. Okay. It's, well, yeah. anyways, thanks, Travis. Yeah. We're not. I'm not going to get into it with good, you. But okay. you're on our first live show. This is so amazing. This is monumental. I'm super excited. And also, if you're nervous, Travis, I just want you to pretend that I'm wearing an animal print suit. Hard okay. to imagine, hard to um, imagine. Yeah. With a hoodie, and I look a little ridiculous. Just imagine it, and then you'll just not feel so nervous. Okay, Okay, yeah. cool. All right. This is going to be super fun. Let's get in it. Also, if I could just stick to the script. But, Travis, tell us about CatCo. Like, tell us about your business, and a little background on the company so, so we can get into this. So, it's like a, you know, like I said, third generation business. And really, it's just kind of like a great American dream. And I think it's probably similar to a lot of entrepreneurial ventures. My granddad was an oil field guy. He was working for this really great, nimble company that focused on helping customers. And then they got bought by a big conglomerate and they just ruined everything great about it. Ooh. And so he was, he had, he had a series it of run-ins. It became run corporate. Well, so like this is a good example. Like they, they brought in a new president and this new president had been running a failed sewing machine company. And, you know, but he was like business guy, right? Yeah. You know, had a business degree. He was so good he failed at the sewing company? Uh, apparently so. Okay. But, you know, I guess he was really good at like spreadsheets, bean counting and all that. And yeah. so they're like, hey, well, all business is the same. Sewing machines, oil field equipment, it's all the same. And yeah. so they did not see eye to eye. He got banned from going out into the plant because he used to be able to like, he'd go out in the plant, talk to the team, say, hey guys, we have a customer. They really need this thing really quick. Can we work it into the schedule? And it was that was what he really liked. He liked helping out, you know, kind of the people make, part. Well, he liked the place at the plate, right? He liked yeah. being able to swoop in at the last second, help somebody really get him out of a jam, and then that was no longer allowed. And so he finally just had enough. He retired. He was going to be a full-time cowboy. And one of the one of the products that he was responsible for were these catalytic heaters. And most of the time, somebody needs one. It's like I mean, most people use it as like a band-aid. You have a piece of equipment and it's frozen. Production is shut down. You got to get it in right away. And so, if you need it, you probably needed it, you know, a week ago. Yeah. And you're now in trouble, and you got somebody breathing down your neck because production stopped. So some of his old customers called him up and were like, "Hey, man, we can't get these heaters from your old company. You know how to make these things. Can't you make us some of these things?" And he couldn't help him. Well, he could. Well, he he always had kind of wanted to be his own boss, and he. So my dad and my uncle were running a tractor dealership. He started making these things in a closet at the tractor dealership, just a one-room shop. Catalytic heaters in Cat a closet? Yeah. That feels like a good a good business name, by yeah. the way. Yeah, and so, I mean, well, it was the Catalytic Heater Company. That's what he started up. And so he started just selling these things as kind of a seasonal business to his yeah. to some of his old contacts. And eventually, my dad and my uncle saw that the catalytic heater business was a little more attractive than being in the tractor, deal okay. uh, tractor dealership. And so they started working for the company, and they... Eventually, my grandfather stepped aside. My dad and my uncle grew it to a certain level. And, you know, they didn't know it at the time, but they kind of hit the ceiling. And, you know, I, whenever I came into the business, I honestly, I came out of the Air Force. I didn't know much about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Now, it's one, all in Texas, right? This like, is all in Texas. Where in Texas? So this is in Dallas. It's about but half it an hour east But it gets cold there, so you're thinking of, like, tell so, me more about that. I'm from Minnesota, so. So. It's, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be cold for you to need this product. And so it is kind of seasonal to where, you yeah. know, you need it in the winter a little more than you do in the summer. But a lot of our customers are out in the Gulf. I mean, it's, yeah. it can be hot and you can still have equipment that's freezing. And so it's, how nerdy do you want to get about this? I, I mean, don't, I'm ready to nerd out, but like, don't bore our audience. So you know? I, I, I will leave it at this. <laughs> Gas comes out of the ground. Whenever you drop the pressure, it gets really, really cold. Ah. And so whenever it gets really cold, equipment freezes and production stops. And so that's why you need these heaters. Oh, okay. So, so tell me about uh, the time in Texas, right? Like this just happened. In fact, we had an event in Dallas where 
there was all, there was like a big freeze, oh, yeah. right? You're talking and about Snowvid, Snowvid, Snowvid. Snowmageddon. Like, did, the, yeah. did, did you have something to do with this to get people so, back So on? here's, like, this is actually an interesting story is that, you know, all the, like, electricity just kind of shut down because there's a whole, I mean, like, Texas is not prepared for sub-zero wow. temperatures and because it happens, like, once every yeah. 20 years, That's you know? Cool. It's, yeah. yeah. It's not okay. like Minnesota where it happens all the time. Yeah. But electricity got shut down, but gas service for most people continued, which is really important because gas in Texas, that's what most people are using to heat their homes. And so the day that the big freeze started, we called our contacts at the gas company and said, hey, you guys okay, you still up and running? And they're like, well, hey, we have, we've got CATCO heaters on our on our pipelines and so they're all still working. Good and to so go. even though electricity failed for a lot of people, natural gas service continued and it's actually kind of cool that you know our product was a really part, big part of what right on. helped people stay warm during that time, yeah. That's awesome. So when you got into the business, like what was the first thought about what what your role could be in the business? Well, so, you know, a lot of people that have the family business, they like grow up in it, right? They like work there in the summer. They, they know all about it. Yeah. It's like my first day that I showed up there, my dad sat me down in a conference room and he said, this is a catalytic heater. <laughs> this is how it works. This is what it's used for. Like I knew nothing about yeah. the about it going in, and so I had a pretty steep learning curve just trying to but learn like about an, it. You're you, you're an engineer and like a space ball. I, I was so okay. Look, I was a civil engineer. My education is in civil engineering. Okay. The biggest thing I learned in my engineering education is that I should not be an engineer. <laughs> and so <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, I was uh, I was a space guy, satellite guy whenever I was in the Air Force, and this has got catalytic heaters have nothing to do with that. Yeah. So I was coming in completely fresh. I had nothing. And pretty quickly, you know, you kind of learn the product, you learn the industry a little bit, but I didn't really gravitate towards that, like, I didn't gravitate towards the sales part of it. I just really fell in love with the business aspect of it. I saw really? that there was, yeah, I mean, I saw the way that, this was my first time of really getting a front row seat to how a business even operates, you know? Yeah. So in addition to learning the product, learning the market, I also had to learn like, oh, hey, this is the way that, you build customers and you get paid and this Accounting is works. yeah this yeah. is this stuff is manufacturing like this is how you make stuff and take orders and it was just you know the engineering part of my brain gravitated towards like just the way that a business operates like a machine yeah and i kind of looked at this machine and i could see that i was like dude if we fine tuned this machine you're like ready to tinker it i could tinker with it yeah, yeah and so yeah. we can start doing it and so but uh, how do they pick you do you have any siblings I do have some siblings. Okay, I have an older, how, yeah. So I have an older brother who's let's never talk about them worked right there. Now. So yeah, I have a younger brother who was there before I was. Okay, so why did they pick you? Well, I don't know that it was really like they like. Did you guys like uh, do like like uh, scissors, paper, rock for it? No. Well, so it, it, you know, that's not how it works. No, that's not really the way it works. So whenever I got <laughs> there, you know, my my younger brother had been working for the company for a couple of years before I got there, and he never really loved it. And, you know, the whole, like, whereas I dug in, like, I remember yeah. there's one time I was at some, you know, conference or something like that. I'm up late at night and I'm just like, have a million ideas about like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, whatever. And I send, you know, this huge email back to my dad and my brother about, hey, here are these ideas, here's the stuff that we could do, whatever. And I get home, my, my brother sits me down and says, this is freaking me out. He's like, this, like, you can't do this, man. It's just... I've, I've got, like, like, I can't handle all of this stuff that ah. you want to do all at once. And so that was the first, like, I didn't know it then. I didn't know anything about EOS at that time. Yeah. But looking back, I'm kind of like, that was sort of my first moment is like, hey, maybe I'm, mm -hmm. m maybe I'm a visionary. Maybe, maybe you're like that where viewer. I have this, yeah, where I've got all these ideas, yeah. or whatever. And so, you know, Chad, my younger brother, was working in the company for a while, and you know, I mean, he, he, like I said, he just never gravitated towards the business thing. Yeah. And it took, it really, it was whenever we started implementing EOS, it accelerated some of these conversations about what do you, life short, what do you really want to do? Yeah. And that's whenever he and said. And then you just became the right person, like. Well, clearly, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it was like there was like we we reached that point where it was like, look, something's got to give. Yeah. Either if 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 you want the business to continue to be what it was then I need to leave and go do something else. Or if we want to grow the business, then it's like maybe you, you're not on board for, for, yeah. for what we want to do. And so, I mean, he's changed careers. He's been a teacher for so a few years. So he left. Years. Yeah, he left. He's been a teacher for a few years, and he is a killing thousand it. times happier doing that than he ever was are whenever we were working terms? at Kegel. Yeah, awesome. yeah, we are. That's good to hear. So, Travis, uh, 
in the pre-interview, you shared that when you first applied for EO, the <laughs> Entrepreneurs Organization, they wouldn't let you join. No, they wouldn't. They would not. Which is pretty funny, and I bet surprising. But tell me about how you felt at that so, moment. So, like around this time where we started to like, and this is pre EOS, I think, where we were just like, or we had just started, but we were really at like the beginnings of like intentionally like, hey, let's try to grow the business. Yeah. And I knew that I needed to, I needed to find like my people, right? I needed to find other people that uh, entrepreneurs yeah other entrepreneurs to hang out with and a friend of mine that actually my friend that introduced me to EOS he was a member of EO and he talked about how big that was for him and you know kind of hanging out with those guys and so I reached out and was like hey I'm looking for some kind of a peer group you know tell me about EO and so we sit down and we start having a conversation and they're like well yeah but you own the business right and I was like well no it's like a family yeah. business and at some point I'm gonna you know like take it over or whatever but right now I don't really even have any equity whatever and they said look if that's the case then you can't this, this is for entrepreneurs people that own their businesses Did that Not, piss you off oh dude I was so butthurt I was like <laughs> so mad I mean just like because I thought to myself it's like look I'm leading at yeah. that point it's like I'm leading I'm a this big company dude. I'm a, yeah, I'm, I'm in charge. charge. I like, made you know, a charge. I'm, yeah, I mean, it's like I'm technically the CEO now. Like, yeah. I should be, you know, You're like. a big deal. Yeah, so Especially I was just like, Texas. fine. It's like, I'll, you know, I'll go, go start my own club, you know, whatever. I mean, I didn't do that and join <laughs> Vistage instead. But. <laughs> oh, Vistage let you in. Yeah, so Vistage All let right. me in. They All had right. different, you know, different standards. But. Uh, they lower their standards for you? <laughs> yeah, you know what you're so, saying? Like <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, so like, but, but the, the, the EO thing, though, I was like, I was super mad. Yeah. And I just was like, like I said, I was just so, like offended that I wasn't like it's like oh you're I'm not, not really enough, in charge not I'm not real. good enough yeah. to join a club. Screw and that. this is this fast forward to a, a couple years later the day whenever I closed the deal on buying the business and you know yeah. that, you know I was going to you know go in sign the paperwork with my you know my dad who was the owner of the business before, um, previously and I show up to work I pull in to the parking lot and there's a sprinkler that's on like the sprinklers are on and it's like spraying water onto the sidewalk. And I think to myself, it's like, you know, that, why are we, why are we watering the sidewalks? <laughs> it's like, number one, the grass looks pretty green already. And number two is like, hey, we're wasting water. And as I get out of my car and I'm having those thoughts, I just like stop, you know, out of body experience. And it's like, that was the first day that I was, you know, like, now all of a sudden it was <laughs> my water. your money. Now it was that. And <laughs> it's just like, water. and I thought back to that conversation yeah. I had with these EO guys where it's like, and, hey, they look, were you don't, right. and I was like, Okay, now I understand why you wouldn't let me join. It's just, it's just different. It's, 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 it's beautiful. It's wonderful, but it is different. Other people's money is different than your well, money. Well, yeah, and you know, right? like, well, and you know, part of like the learning curve that I had after I bought it is like, look, my, my dad and my uncle, who had ran the run the business for decades, and my, you know, my uncle had passed away before I came to the company, but you know, they did a great job, and they had built up a really big nest egg or whatever, and you know, you had this huge safety net. Yeah. of money and retained earnings that they had yeah. left in the business that, you know, so I was free to do a bunch of stupid stuff when I was in charge and it was just like. All right, what's, tell us about what, one of the stupidest decisions you've ever made. Oh. This is fun. I have a lot, so I can fill in for you. So, okay, you there's, I mean, this is like, this is embarrassing, but it's like, look, let's be it's open. It's okay, and, you're just live and honest, with we'll the real. entire world So right there's now. this, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the dumbest things is I bought a robot and. Uh, What'd you name it? I didn't come up with a name. It never even, yeah. I mean, like, we didn't get to the oh. point where it was. A all, all, well, like all of the all of the words that I called the, oh, no, all the that words that I idea. called the robot. Like, we probably shouldn't talk about on live oh. podcast. I mean, it's like a lot of four letter words. I used right. to describe the robot. Right. No, but it's like you know, it was like we had some we had some vendor come in with like you know kind of best of intentions, and they're like, hey, if you automate your welding and you get this robotic <laughs> did welder, he open, <laughs> did he open up his jacket and go, I got a robot to tell you, no? Basically that like, like that. that. Well, I mean, it's like, look, you know, Snake we were, royalty. you know, we were like, I love getting sold. I love like, I, I like, I, I love a good sales pitch. And okay. these guys are pretty good salespeople. And they talked us into this robot. And there was just so much more into like getting an automated welding system online besides like you buy the, like, and this is. You couldn't just plug it in. This is a lesson <laughs> I've had to learn over and over again is that you do something like that. That's not the end. That's the beginning. It's like, okay, so you bought the robot. Okay. You're not done. Now yeah. you are getting started. And actually, Chad, my brother, who one of the things that he always really got frustrated with me by is he said, Travis's idea of like, you know, coming in with a new initiative. So he comes in with a sledgehammer and he knocks down this big, knocks down a wall 
And he's just like, all right, wall's knocked down. Let's go knock down the next one. And it's just like, dude, you, now somebody's got to clean all this crap up. <laughs> clean man. up on aisle eight now. Yeah, and so You're this was, a visionary. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Aww. Thanks. I caught, anyway, so yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I caused a lot of problems. And, and, you know, and back at that time, we didn't have the rocket fuel going. We didn't have a right integrator in place to, yeah. to you know, to, well, to, to let's press talk the about brakes. That. Let's yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So um, you have a good integrator now. Fantastic. 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 Yes. You, you can tell me. If it, okay. No, really, he's no, you know, no, he's, he's for real like good. Wink. He's for Why real not? good. Okay. Yeah. So, um, tell me how long it took to get to that level of like visionary integrator, rocket fuel dynamic duo for you. So, <laughs> I remember uh, a few years ago. Uh, I think it's Ali Nasser gave the keynote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so he gave a great. He gave a great yeah, keynote. Yeah, he's great. He's yeah, fantastic. Good, good, good dude. Um, but I, I think it was his keynote where he talked about, you know, you read Rocket Fuel, and I think that they say something in there of like, hey, you know, 2% of the entrepreneurial population is like, got the goods to do both. Yeah. You know, where you can wear both hats. And, and he was every just, person's like, that's me. That, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Me. And Allie talks about like, it's like, oh, I thought that that was me. And it's just like, yeah, maybe it, it's not. Yeah. You know, you are not the exception to the rule. And I... I think I read Rocket Fuel and I had to have that same revelation. Yeah, where, epiphany. Well, I mean, and it was also like, you know, you know, good look, good integrators don't come cheap. And, you know, there's there's a temptation to, you know, kind of bootstrap it and do it on the cheap. And But you, what you don't realize until you get the right person yeah. is how much money you're leaving on the table by trying to do both of those things yourself. Yeah. And so, like, you know, there was a while where it's like, you know, initially when we first started implementing EOS, it was like, you know, Chad, my brother's going to be the integrator. We had some tough conversations, and yeah. it's just like, hey, I don't want to be a businessman when I grow up. This is not right for me. And yeah. then I was filling both roles. We made one hire, and it wasn't quite right, you know. And, you know, yeah. he was he was too much, like, he thought he was an integrator. Turns out he's a visionary. Now he's an entrepreneur doing oh, his own thing. Those and fake integrators yeah. act. I know those are hard. Well, like, look, as somebody that was a fake integrator once, it's like I, you I know, was a I fake can integrator. empathize. Oh, really? Yeah. How I mean, I. Yeah. How, how, how did that come about? It does. Um, I just now hire integrators around me all over the place <laughs> because um, I'm a disaster. Yeah. As an oh, integrator. yeah. I, you know, uh, you. I heard you described as like. Uh, it's like. Somebody oh. once told me that you are like it's like working for a terrier. <laughs> that if you don't, <laughs> if you don't no. stay out, if I'm you don't stay boxer. out too far, I don't in front, like, I'm you're not like nipping the at the heels and you're biting Stop at people. Stop it! Yeah. That sounds micromanaging. I hope my team is not saying those kind of things behind my back. I won't say who said that. Y'all you know, know who you are. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, back to you, but you're the focus of the interview, <laughs> sorry, so sorry. stop it. I, I saw that reversal. Yeah. Look, what are you loving about your visionary seat now? You finally embraced it, huh? Well, I, I, it's, I had an interesting, like, I remember there was one time I was talking to my dad and my aunt who owned part of the company and was, like, part of this advisory board we had going on, and I said something to them once about just, like, looking out into the future where it's just like, hey, it's like, I don't want to be doing... Like, I don't want to be doing payroll. Like, I don't want to be the person yeah, that does that. Ew. And I remember both of them were kind of like, well, payroll. well, both of them Tough. were just like, well, what would you do? You know, and, you know, my my dad <laughs> and, you know, who's a very, you know, who I love dearly or whatever is his definition of productivity is hands on the keyboard. He's a worker, yeah. you know, I mean, and that's kind of the way that he grew up. And so initially it's whenever that's what you see and that's what you grow up admiring and that's what built the company into something that was worth yeah. me investing, you know, basically all of my money into and buying is you see that as your mentor and it's hard to let go of that idea of like, this is what it means to be productive, is yeah. to be in your office banging on that keyboard and in, in wrapping your head around the idea, it, it, it was hard for a while to give myself permission to recognize that coming to the EOS conference and hanging out with people like you and getting like all these great ideas that it's like that that is work and that that is that part is of work. and that that is the value that I am bringing you know and another thing that my dad told me that I disagree with now looking back cool should we call him <laughs> I don't think that he's watching anyway it, it, I, I tell this to him as well is that I remember he told me and this is kind of also maybe a generational thing he said look and this is one of the times before we found EOS we're trying to like sort out what is everybody going to be doing you, yeah. know, you make a big list of like hey here's yeah. all the crap we got to get done who's going to do what and we're making these lists and one of his rules was like hey if you got a job where 
you only really like dislike 20% of the stuff that you're doing, like that's a pretty good job. Yeah. I, I don't know. But like, you didn't like that percentage. Well, I mean, I didn't like that percentage, but like that's kind of all that I knew. And then as you start hanging around, like people, it's got like it's got to be hard. You got to suffer through. Yeah, it, all and that so kind like, of stuff. and so yeah. that was kind of the thing is that whenever you like giving myself permission to go do the things that I am actually well equipped to do, the things that energize me, the things that actually I find fascinating and motivating, like you yeah. know, strategic coach uh, folks talk about, sort of recognizing that it's like, hey, work doesn't have to drain you doesn't have to suck it doesn't have to suck yeah my yeah. friend chad gano that's that, like right? his suck. no like dude that, that's that's his mantra again, is like you know work doesn't have to stink well you know what I, it's also that like the same thing that got you to where you are is not necessarily the same thing that's going to get you to oh, another yeah. place and so like allowing yourself to get to like leave what was best practice to then go invent and that's part of your visionary it, it, well, self right? and, and like i said is that it's we didn't we didn't have the language to describe this, but what had happened at Catco was that Catco, long before I even got there, had hit the ceiling. But they yeah. didn't know how to break out of it. They just didn't have the tools. They didn't know how to do it. And this is something that happens to a lot of companies. You know, my friends that are running EOS or not, you see it in a lot of different types of business where it's like, you, you know, you know, companies age, they kind of grow up. And, you know, once they get to, like what gets you into adolescence is what, you know, I've heard called like the go-go mentality. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, you're the owner of the company. You're also the guy that's filling yeah. the orders. You're yeah. also the guy that's entering in the invoices. Yeah, multiple hats. Yeah, you're doing all the stuff all the time. Chief cook and bottle washer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, but the next step of your evolution is that you you you've got to transition into professional management, and it's like you got to make the decision: Are we going to do this? And if you're going to do this, you need a yeah. set of tools, you know. And that's sort of what we didn't have with EOS. Yeah. And so, you know, my dad and I, we actually got introduced to EOS by two, two different people that didn't know each other like within two days of one Yeah, another. the universe told Yeah, you. the universe was just like, you need to do this. And it's like both of us read read the book and were just like, dude, this is we what this company this. needs. And of course, my, my dad was just like, here you go. You this do is, it, This kid. is what you should do if you want to take this company yeah. and grow it. Sounds and like a lot of work. Yeah. It's not. It's like it frees you to be who you really are. And well, it, it does, but I, I think that everybody, I think most people approach a level where it's like they don't want the next set of challenges, you know, like, and you know, that's, yeah. my, my dad had done what he, wa my dad was getting what he, the whole thing of EOS is that it's like, you know, hey, are you getting what, getting what you want out of your business? And yes. for a long time, dude, the company was giving the owners yeah. and the leaders of the company, that's what, they were getting what they wanted. Well, it know? sounds like the visionary, and this is, uh, you know, I, f I feel like sometimes it's a sneak attack move where the visionary oh. seat grow. What are you? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm just, I'm, like I'm, I'm just, no, I'm, okay, I'm just, cool. I'm, I'm I wasn't yeah, sure you if you're like, oh, you got something on your, like, no, you're no, drooling. No. I'm not drooling. No, okay. you're not drooling. Look, I, I think the, this idea of the visionary seat is not a static seat, okay? And the roles and responsibilities of the visionary seat grow up over time as well. And sometimes we don't always dust off and say, like, what is the right type of visionary in a company? It almost seems like that's always some sort of, like, constant. And the GWC factor applies. Yeah, I, I think that it does. And I think that what, what I have been coached to try to pay attention to is like your emotional response to the work that you are doing. And it's just like always being in tune with, hey, you know, what, what is it that you find to be fascinating and motivating, you know, versus what is it that you find to be irritating. And I think that's something that does evolve over time. And I think that that's a right. challenge that all entrepreneurs, I think, have to face is, is does there come a time where what you find to be fascinating and motivating no longer aligns with what the company's oh, mission and what the company's purpose is? You mean letting is? go of the vine? Yeah, well, like, I mean, well, I think letting go of the vine or in some cases, like, hey, maybe the right move for the company it's and for myself is to move on and move do something on. else, which, yeah. you know, I'm, that's not, thank goodness I've got you know, ton of runway left with Catco, I think, but yeah. at some point that might be the thing. How, how, how do you center yourself uh, around this idea of um, constantly assessing, are, are you happy? Do you love what you're doing? Like, do you, do you stop and take clarity breaks about this and say, God, do I, am, am I where I want to be? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 the, the clarity break is good. You know, whenever I, you know, do my check-ins or whatever, like, you know, so the leadership, you know, like the leadership practices, right? That, that falls in one of the five leadership practices, taking clarity breaks. Yeah. And so, uh, 
I don't always grade myself highly there. I don't do it as regularly as I should. But like even today on the plane, Jill, my implementer, the amazing, Jill Young, amazing, the amazing Jill uh, Young, like, woo, yes. Jill Young. We love Jill Young. Yes. But one of her things is she's like, anytime I'm on an airplane, I I I, I use that as Ooh, quite clarity break that's time. That's really smart. Yeah. And so today it's like I was kind of like, I don't know. It was clarity break. I was reading I was reading the new people book. Awesome. I, yeah, I was reading Thank the new people book. That. Oh yeah, no, it was it was really amazing. good. But as I'm going through there. I would, you know, get through a few pages and I would like have some ideas like, oh, okay, right. I'd like have to bust out my notebook and write yeah. some things down or whatever That's to allowed. clarify those ideas. What was your aha on the plane today? Ooh. Or today, was it today? Did you come in today? Well, so there was, a, so one of the big things that, one of my biggest takeaways from the book was, you know, it's a rule of seven times, right? You got to hear this thing over and over and over again. And I'm sure that I've heard this before, but it was Gino's like seven rules for, you know, healthy leadership teams. And there was a couple of them that just jumped off the page to me. Like as, um, because we have a, a member of our leadership team is pretty new to EOS, he's new to our company. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, it's like this, these two bullet points, and one of them was about the, uh, the language of EOS, like, you know, like using the same language and agreeing to run on one operating system. I asked him, I was like, hey, if you were gonna learn Spanish, what would you do? And he's like, well, I would go to Spain. And I was like, this is Spain. This is where you can immerse yourself in the language. And so this would be a level up for our leadership team where you can take your understanding and your, yeah. you know, of the language to the, that next level. And then the same thing goes with uh, being able to, the ability to call out issues and, and work them out. I was like, this is gonna be an opportunity for you to see what good looks like from a lot of different perspectives. And yeah. this is gonna help you better recognize, yeah. hey, here's some issues. And so anyway, they're just like, those two nuggets and like we got here we arrived you know and before the conference started we sat and we had a cup of coffee and it's like dude here's two things that you know you You're can on be it. on the, yeah, yeah you can be on the lookout for you know set some intention to amazing yeah no that was good there's a lot of takeaways that was that was just that was one that stands out there well just to remind the audience we are live at the 2024 eos conference travis do you know that do you know that we're live here is that where we are <laughs> i know it's <laughs> like this weird like matrix thing okay. you are exactly where you are so right I am now exactly where I am. so um also i love your kicks oh thank he's you he's wearing amazing kicks we can't quite show them right now yeah, but I'm just kick your leg no no kick your no leg. not gonna no that no. seems like a really bad but idea. i want you to tell us about your record revenue sneakers <laughs> which you're <laughs> wearing today yeah so the uh my, uh, I got a buddy of mine that's a sneakerhead, and he was, you know, kind of got me into that world. But what I decided to do is like, hey, I'll like, if I'm gonna buy sneakers, I can't just, I got to set some boundaries. And so I was like, okay, I'll just do this. Why, to wait, chalk sorry, up. sorry. Why do you have to set boundaries around sneakers? What do you mean? Because my friend that is th that was getting me into this has a closet where he has like 80 pairs of sneakers, yeah, so? and he's like, I mean, I that's, mean, that's good for him. I don't have, like. the I don't have the closet space. That's just. We just had a garage sale. If I bring a bunch of sneakers home, all like, right, damn, all right. Them. So I was just like, hey, this will be like, anyway, I don't know how it came to it, but it's like, I figured it'd be a cool thing. It's like, hey, I'll buy myself sneakers. It's like, celebrate wins. And so I had my eye on this pair of, this pair of Jordan threes that I'm wearing right now, the Georgetown right. threes. And so I was like, I will buy these. Like this, these are going to be my, whenever we set new record revenue for like the history of the company, Yeah. we get to the end of that month and it's record re revenue trailing 12. I'll buy myself those shoes. And so now, anytime I wear these shoes, they're not just my Jordan 3s. They're like, these are my record yeah, revenue Yeah, you're feeling so, good. You're wearing them on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, like, hey, look look good, feel good, play good, right? And I was debating. I love like, it. Actually, go wait. You're debating what? I don't know. Oh, well, I was debating you. which ones I have because I have these, then I have a couple of others that well, I was like. you look good. You look good. You're well, all thanks. very matched up. Yeah. Um, but, like, look good, feel good, play look good. Look good, feel good, play good. All right. Um, play. Let's go to play. Okay. Okay. So, Travis, you tell me that you're an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about I don't know that your I said athletic that. I, I background. Think, did I, think I say what I, no, no. You, you did tell me. The I don't point. know that I said that I was an athlete. I think that I told you that I was the... You scored a soccer goal I, I once? I scored, or scored one sco goal in soccer when I was in high school. Okay, I think that's job. what I said. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can move on from that topic. I just wanted to... <laughs> there's not a lot There's not a lot to dig there. into there. No. Okay. Um, Travis. Travis. Okay, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have an engineering background. I do. All right? You're... you're the lovable nerd you're amazing <laughs> okay and you have a low quick start a relatively low quick start right on your colby score so is it some low is that is that like the nice way Look, to say it's that not, like, I'm it's not an accusation okay like work on your defensiveness okay. right now 
right? Like it's not. Well, like so. No, no, no. Like that's that's like like I carry a chip on my no, shoulder. No, I know, I, I know. That's why that's I'm like, drawing it out. Like yeah, I want yeah, you yeah. to fight. Like come out, okay, and swing. All right, it. All right. Tell me why this is like because I know like the visionary identity is in high quick start and crazy and whatever. But you're like no, I'm redefining visionary, and you've got high fact finder. Yeah. Little bit of a low quick start, but tell me why this works for you. Well, so I, I think that. It was like, I, I'm, I'm not lying, like, there was a long time where, like, I took the Colby, and it's like, I no, to, I, no joke, I took it again, because I didn't like the result that I got. Because a lot of the people that I admire that are entrepreneurs have, like, that that super high quick yeah. start, you know, yeah. that are, you know, and, you know, low fact finders, and I was kind of this sort of inverted model. And I was, you know, it's, it's the That's same thing as... you unique. Well, but it's just, it was the same thing as the EO deal where I was just like, oh. You feel like, like imposter yeah, we, or something. Yeah, yeah like very much on. imposter syndrome. I'm yeah. like, ah, do, am I a real entrepreneur if I don't look and, you know, sound this way or whatever? Um, but once I, once I embraced it, once I leaned into it, I do find a way to make it work for me. And it's like understanding that it's just, this is just the order that I operate in. And also, I, I have come to appreciate that this this makeup does bring a lot of value to people. It is like I can use this to help people yeah. because but as being in being a you know high a uh, shorter quick start, higher fact finder, I'm pretty good at act, asking questions. I'm pretty good at analyzing things. You make good decisions. Uh, typically, you know the robot thing was stupid. I but am. I anyway. the robot thing. <laughs> but no, what's interesting <laughs> though is that whenever I whenever I follow when I follow when I when I act in accordance with who I actually am, my decision quality is pretty good. It's whenever and I try sort of, to be somebody when you're I try not. to be somebody I'm not, Stop and I pull doing the that. trigger, you know, too quick. Yeah. That's whenever I make really stupid decisions. But also, you know, I think I feel like sometimes low quick starts, high fact finders get a bad rap for moving slow. I think sometimes you're just more, like you're you're so studied at something that you can actually appear to move faster than your quick start. So maybe. It, well, so I, I I will admit that I can try to think something to death I can like analyze something I know about that to the brother. nth degree oh yeah no I mean and I know that we drive people crazy with that so crazy so but but it's it just like anything else like if, if I was somebody different if I was a super high quick start I would have to do some things to hedge against some of the trouble that that can get you into and so I, I get a lot of coaching I get a lot of you know help to like just I, I, I find a way to make it work for me and I sort of you know I understand that it's like I gotta give. I gotta box myself in. Give myself a limited amount of time to do the research. Ooh, but then once it's done, now you gotta do it. it. Well, decision. you know, like I, I, I'm a, I do strategic coach, Good. and the tools there. Yeah. Uh, this is a great description of those tools. Is that it's like, hey, if you're, if you're a little bit of a quick trigger, the tools will help you slow down just a little bit. If you're a little bit, if you can get stuck in the mud, it'll sort of speed you up. It'll it'll sort of say, okay, you're done thinking. Now it's yeah, time to go. That's and so. Amazing. Yeah, so, but I, I, I use those and I get a lot, like I said, I get a lot of coaching. I do a lot of, you know, get a lot it. of help and yeah. You know what, um, your LinkedIn profile says still learning. Oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. My favorite fridge magnet ever said, I am learning. It was like a state of perpetuity. And that, that was like really important to be uh, part of my life. It has been like, yeah. I am learning. Cause once you think you know it all, that's a death trap. No, that's, that, that's, right? yeah. So I mean, you're a the, the most important learner. thing to know is that you don't know. Everything, okay, right? but I also, if you're always learning and you're always studying, um, are you? Do you make? Are you decisive? I think so. I think that it's like, yes, like you like you described it is that it's like I have to go through my process. Yeah. But something that I find though is that it's like once I come to the decision, it, and that's something that I've had to learn, is that I have a good process for coming to a conclusion and so whenever I do come to a conclusion it's like having trust in that trust and then going and then also even if it's it turns out to not be a hundred percent right you don't beat yourself up about it. no don't beat yourself up and it's just like look decide like make a decision the decision is going to change the environment and That's then right. it's like learn and then make another decision and learn and make, make another, another decision, decision. Yeah. it opens the door for all those other decisions absolutely yeah all right look we have to take a small break okay okay because uh, we've got this incredible <laughs> ad that I've got to read. Yeah. And I'm going to do a great job at this. All I right? can't wait. So, I can't wait. So, uh, Travis, we are launching the EOS One software at this conference. And I'm going to tell you all about it. All right? All right.
You cannot build a great business on multiple operating systems. Did you know that? I did. You must choose one. EOS One is the simple to use software with everything you need to run your business on EOS. Run better meetings, whether you're in person or remote, access foundational EOS tools faster and easier, and build a more trusting and accountable team. Bring everything EOS into one place with the software exclusively from the makers of EOS. One vision, one system, one team, and you can begin your 30-day free trial of EOS One today at eosone.com. So you're going to go do a demo. Yeah, I was about I to ask, is there somewhere that I can go check out the software? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm you so know? glad you asked, because <laughs> it's right behind me. Oh, yeah. You're gonna go, or I'm going to walk you over and do a demo myself. All right, so we can continue. We're going to continue. OK, I, when I was stalking you online, oh, okay. um, I loved one of your LinkedIn posts. Oh, OK. And it was about um, this idea of like, you know, we always, we, everyone's always like, I hate being micromanaged. Like, no one wants to be labeled as a micromanager, oh, right? Yeah. Oh. And then, but the opposite is an absentee manager. And, you know, this, like, badge value of just being like, I'm so hands off, like, everybody, I'm not going to get in your way, this whole thing. But you had a really specific point of view on that whole shtick. Yeah. I'd like you to expose it here live at the uh, U.S. Conference 2024 in San Diego. So, like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that say <laughs> take so much pride, and it's like, you know, oh, yeah, it's like, well, here was the thing that I was, like, thinking of when I, like, I was working with these people. We'll, you know, omit the names. Uh, but yeah. working with these people, and I was telling them about, hey, this is this is kind of the way that we see this, this relationship going, where it's like you're kind of keeping us up to date on what's happening, and we're meeting or whatever. I mean, and it was, and, and, it, and they push back and they're just like, hey, look, if you want to micromanage us, then whatever. I was oh. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was like, I this, hate isn't, that. this isn't micromanagement. This is just regular management. Direction. <laughs> this is just management. Like providing structure and direction. Yeah. And, and so I, I think that everybody gets real worried about being a micromanager, but what it can lead to is where it's like you're just not. Clarity. Well, yeah, you, you, there's no clarity. You're not creating an environment where people can even be accountable. And so if you're just like, hey, hands off, I'm going to let you. Yeah. It's like no, you like you are a manager. It is your job to provide the system and the structures that people can operate within. And I like I don't know if this is true. I heard it once, but I heard this like this is, makes for a good fable anyway. Okay, well, let's pretend. Let's pretend. So you know, in, in the state of California, where everybody's just like, oh, you know, hey, we want to like live free and you know, be we in are touch in with California, nature. California, by the way, there's yeah. Californians. We're in California. Yeah. Be careful. But somebody decided that Text it's just like, them. hey, you know, the kids at school, they're being confined by the fences at the playground. Oh. And it's creating this environment where everybody's feeling confined. And so we're gonna get rid of all of the fences. And the result of that was that the kids, yeah. well, no, what, they, well, no, what happened they ran was- into the street? No, they didn't oh. run into the street. <laughs> they stayed in the exact middle of the playground. Oh, they didn't no. go, they, they was, you know, a they one acre playground. Because they didn't know where the boundaries okay, were. Okay, this is why it's a freedom box. That's Ex why I say, I say you have a freedom box. Well, and it's like, yeah. the, you know, the, 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 this, the this is a, uh, from uh, Extreme Ownership, the book, where he's like, hey, discipline equals freedom. It's yeah. like yeah. creating this structure and providing these boundaries gives people freedom so that they know. Clarity is kindness. Clarity is kindness. That is a great way of saying it, yes. I didn't so. say that. Oh, well, whoever said it, that was really said it very eloquent. Some smart person yeah. that I wish I could remember said it. We say it a lot in the EOS system. I'll just give credit to that. Okay, yeah, that's that, that's good. Or I, you, I, I could just say you. I don't think that that's it wasn't true. You? I don't feel like I said that. So. All right, well, what else pisses you off about bad managers? Let's go there. Ooh. You seem like you got a chip on your shoulder. You're well, ready so to talk. Like Let's the, do it. Get angry, Trev. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Uh, it, you ever hear people like you ever like so you go on LinkedIn and you see people talking about like just like you know hey a manager is this bad stuff whereas a leader is whatever and it's like I feel like ah. managers kind of get a bad rap yeah that's not you know cool. where everybody talks about management as if it is some like lesser less than. L some less than thing and it's just like yeah. no like anybody that has ever worked for a really really good manager understands value how manager. valuable that can be because like yes. look the manager is the person who is providing those clear boundaries and giving you room to run in between. They're clearing the obstacles. They're making things run smoother. They're eliminating friction. And it's like, that is a really important job. And it's also something that a lot of people that are, you know, good leaders are really crappy at. Like, totally. Yeah. No, I mean, like L a lot of- L plus, 
right? Yeah. Leadership plus management equals accountability. It's yeah. not one or the other. And just because you're better at one than the other doesn't mean you get to, it's not optional. No, you, you have to, to no, you, you've got yeah. to do both, but it's like you also yeah. need to understand your limitations yeah. in, in either of these areas. And, you know, yeah. one of the things that I like in, about the LMA, the, the LMA conversation from, you know, how to be a great boss and all the other EOS stuff is like, you don't need to change, like, show up as yourself. You be you and fill these roles. You be you yeah. and be a leader and a manager. And if like, if you're super tough, hardcore and like yeah. hard nosed, hey, show up That's that cool. way. If you're a little bit more chill and you wanna wear an animal jumpsuit, you know, like. Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you, you do, you show do up that, that way. Maybe but you're cool like but that. you know, be yeah. yourself, let your freak flag fly. Freak flag. I love that, I love <laughs> Isn't that. Isn't that good? Um, but the two things that we say you have to be though, no matter what type of leader you are, what are those two things? Do you remember from focus day? You Ooh, have to the test care oh, yeah. about your people. You have to care, legitimately yes. care about your people. And you have to want to be great. You have to be want to be a great leader. Yeah. You have to actually strive for leader, leadership abilities. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then also, like, I'm looking, like, uh, you know, Kim Scott's talking tomorrow, right? Yes. Yeah, and so, like, Radical Candor challenge. Tell me all about Radical Candor, because oh, uh, I, well, I happen to be interviewing Kim Scott tomorrow. Oh, I'm so jealous. What questions do you have for her? You know, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think. I, I want to see her presentation because is, is, are no, you? No, we're just having like are a you conversation. facilitating? Like I yes. saw it's a fireside chat. It it's is not a fireside a chat. Keynote. Yeah, and but so we're gonna go into those concepts and radical candor. Well, oh, I, I have. Oh, I ahead. have a question for you about it. Oh, Ready? Okay. When have you um, slipped into the obnoxious aggression category? And oh. you all just look up radical candor later. I'm not gonna explain it to you, but like. Talk, you know what obnoxious aggression is, like what I'm doing right now to Travis, <laughs> like super obnoxious and aggressive, saying, Travis, answer the question. Well, it's like, like I think, where I am, <laughs> sorry. I, yes, <laughs> I broke him, I did it. I'm sorry, no, you do like, it so good, but I, like, had this, I just needed to get a little tickle. I had this, I mean? so I, I, I had this conversation with my integrator literally Music. yesterday. Shocker, so I mean, it, I'm pretty intuitive. Well, you, 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 you've got to find the line between it can be therapeutic to like get mad. Yeah, it is. It can and be, and true. it can yeah. be, you know, and it's like, but yeah. look, you need to talk about that with your therapist. You can't. It's like asking your scream like, into a pillow. Where I have, where I have failed on that is whenever I put my own desire to make myself feel better ahead of like kind of the, the ooh, greater good. Ooh, where it's just like, hey, look, if like me freaking out about this or you know. Yeah getting mad or you know ramp ranting and raving or whatever that's maybe that's going to make me feel better but that's not going to be good for the yeah. team and so whenever that that's that's usually what is the diagnosis is where i get have you ever lost your cool oh yeah i mean oh, like yeah. what happened tell me the tell me tell me one of those embarrassing stories you know this is like i mean so this is back like I don't know if I was technically like in charge of the company yet. My dad was still like kind of there some of the time or whatever. Yeah. And we had this person who was working for us and I don't even remember exactly what it was that, that, that he had messed up that I was so upset about. Yeah. But I was on the, like I was on the phone with him and he was driving and I just, I got him backed into this corner and I just kept on I just you, kept inquiring and inquiring and inquiring you know, you and being stop. sort of that. You're pressing the red button. Pressing the red button over and over and over again. And I it's never like, do that. In, without knowing it before long, like my voice had been raised. Some four letter words were, you know, yelled to where my, you know, my door was closed, but my dad in the room next to me oh my God. comes over and is just like, who were you on the phone with? Yeah. And what was so important that it required all of that stuff? And I... Even right then and there, it was just like, I mean, clearly it was not as, you gotta, as big yeah. a thing. You gotta look yourself in I, the I really wish that I remembered the specific, I, I wish I remembered the details of the conversation. I don't remember that, but I do remember that I felt like a complete jackass uh, totally. because I was being, a, you know, I don't know which one of the animals that applies to, being a bully. Um, this guy. Yeah, Dobby the bull. This guy. Yeah, and so. Dobby the bull? Dobby. Dobby? Dobby. Yeah. You named them? I named the animals, yeah. Yeah. Dobby. Dobby the bull. Okay, DBB cool. DB, DB is like, don't be a bully. Don't, ah, right. Or don't BS me, bro. Like love, either, okay, e oh, yeah, either one of those. Enough. So if somebody's, that's when we throw the bull at people. Travis, I have a similar story. Oh, yeah? Um, I was um, a really new manager at this ad firm that I worked at in Chicago called Leo Burnett. 
And I thought I was like the bomb. I was like, oh, you know, I'm a supervisor now, which meant nothing. Yeah. But I was all like, oh, you know, I'm, I got ego going on. And this woman um, lied to me uh, mm. about this thing. And it didn't even matter. It was like, it, she lied. And I was pissed. Yeah. And I, it was like cubicle land. And I, I brought her into the office and I ripped her a new, you know what. Yeah. And it was so stupid and obnoxious. And I just got on my high horse and I thought it was all that. Can I just tell you that this woman from like a whole other floor down came around and, I, and the whole entire floor could hear me. Oh, it was yeah. so embarrassing oh, yeah. and horrible. And she came into my office and she gave me the best lesson of my life. She said, you, she's like, that, you need to stop that right now. That is the most horrible thing. We can hear you everywhere. You are an asshole, yeah. basically, you know? And I was like, I felt so put in my place. And it was like the biggest lesson. I mean, talk about radical candor. Yeah, I mean, well, and it's just me, like, in, 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 in so what it sounds like is that that conversation was one where it was like, hey, this wasn't about her ranting and raving because she was so mad. This was about challenge directly, care personally. It's just like, hey. Look at you whipping out the concept. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's just it. like, look, it's yeah. like, you, this, is, yeah. this is not good for you to no, do this. I screwed this. that yeah. up. I screwed that up. Okay, yeah. so really, like, can you tell me about ruinous empathy? So the other side of things where you're oh, feeling yeah. like uh, you can't quite be direct and clear and you're not showing the care, but you're like, you're like fine. You're kind of almost like backing off and let, letting it play out and over empathizing with somebody. Well, I don't know that it's like it's it's not. It, it's it's not. I don't think that it's over empathizing because I think that if you were really like putting, if you were truly you really, putting uh, yeah, yourself into caring, that person's yeah, shoes, then you would do the right thing of telling then them. Then you like, would want to hear. You would want to know the yeah, truth. In like the long you've run, had right? a piece of lettuce in your teeth the whole time, and I would have told you. <laughs> it's not true. Not true. His, his teeth are great. I haven't had lettuce in a while. That would, like, be a big problem. <laughs> we know it was lettuce. a lie because yeah. you've not had greens for yeah, so long. that's right. Come on. Uh, no, so, it's like, texting. ruinous empathy, I mean... <sighs> Does that apply to you? Oh, sure. I mean, and I, I think that it's... Eventually, you're going to come to the right conclusion, right? Eventually, it's, like, the truth is going to win the day. And so you may as well just be honest Ooh, earlier. So can you say that again? That is, like, a truth well, bomb, uh, the, the truth. The truth will win the day eventually. I mean, and your your opinions about the truth don't change the truth. The truth is the truth. Ooh. And it's like if you. It's true. But courage. You get in like here's here is where I have failed. Is that there has been a lot of times where I have projected myself onto another person, where it's like yeah. I, I think to myself, if I was in this person's position, then this is what I would do, or this is what this is what I would want. Yeah where I would want to grow in this way, or I would want to, you know, learn about this, or I would immerse myself into this, or whatever. But the fact that I would want to do that doesn't mean, that, like, this person never said that they wanted you to do that. You took away their agency. I took away their agency. Yeah. I basically am just projecting myself onto them, and then, rather than being clear about, hey, this is my expectation of you, this is what I want from you, yeah. this, is what we, this is what the company needs from you, I just kind of continue to wish that they will be that the they thing. will that they will suddenly turn into this person that they have never even claimed to be, which is, you know, sounds crazy when you say it out loud, it but does. it's just, again, this kind of goes back to the same thing. I think it's really sort of the same root cause. My unwillingness to have that uncomfortable conversation. I am putting my comfort, you know, Above. making what's going to make me feel better ahead of what's going to be for the greater good. You seem like a pretty advanced, <laughs> kind of like centered person what what are you doing to learn that kind of like a lot of people are uh, seeing a therapist or oh, they're yeah, in groups that. or they're you know i don't know doing meditation and that kind of stuff what what makes you feel more centered and clear yeah i mean so like i, I, I do the like I, I i go to therapy highly recommended for everybody right i Heck mean yeah, yeah we should all be uh, yeah this and is so, therapeutic right now well I it is i mean it's like but but there's all you know it's also nice to talk to a professional, right? I mean, <laughs> well, so I'm not a professional at that. Not at that. Come <laughs> and so on. anyway, there's, there's, yeah, there's conversations I would have with my therapist that I would not have with you. But uh, no, so I do that. But I really, I think that, I, I think that what it comes down to is like really trying to stay in my lane, you know, like trying to just stay in touch with kind of what you're talking about earlier of like, hey, what is it that provides the energy what is it that you feel good about and so yeah. a lot of my the coaching i get is centered around that 
but well what are you working on right now you said I am learning so what is it about yourself that is about like this growth mindset you're you're trying to get better you're trying to improve that's like deep all the way get down to the soul level for me well and so it's I mean I am not doing as good of a job as I should at making sure that everyone at the company understands the vision and it's just like not and, and really what that being honest with like this like deep down yeah being honest with myself and others about what i want being honest with myself and others about what i want say and it again so, <laughs> say it again being honest it's like a pretty with woman myself episode right now. and I others i spent 10,000 in therapy about, to say it. I'll say yeah. it again i'm very angry at my father say yeah. it one more time yeah what i being honest with myself and others about what i want i love it and really that's i mean like the the, the the vision of the company that is you know fundamentally that's what it's based around is like hey how do we want to show up for the market what kind of problems do we want to solve and, and a lot of that and that's kind of we we're talking about earlier just like you know hey what like hey if you're not running payroll and you're not entering yeah. orders what yeah. are you going to do it's yeah. like getting clear about that that's work that takes work to get there but once you get but once you get clear with that you have to be honest with everybody else in the organization about that what do that. you want that you're not being honest about do you want to talk about it? No. Well, I mean, it's Let's like there's. Uh, I mean, we're here. I heard this. This has been. This is. This is actually Mark's. Uh, whenever Mark gave the EOS Life talk. Yeah. This has been several years ago at the conference, but. One of the things he talked about was the three uniques and how he's just like, if you want to live the EOS life, this is one of the most powerful things in the VTL is the three uniques, and he's yep. like, you as a visionary, you have to be in love with these three uniques. Yep. Because. This is the way that you were saying that you were going to show up for people, and if you don't love that, then you were going to be a prisoner in your own company. Ugh. And so Making that's me one where trapped inside. Well, I mean, it's like, and, and so that's something that, it, like, we've got work to do there. We're really refining the way that we want to show up for the market, and making sure that that is consistent with, you know, the way, the, the kind of company that we want to create. What's stopping you from saying what you want? It seems like you're getting down to it. Like it's clear that you're aware that you don't, that you're not saying what you want. You need to share your vision more. Like, why are you not? Are you, you fear something? Ooh, maybe it's my fact finder. You're not maybe sure I'm because just, well, you don't have enough information. No, I mean, well, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Maybe because of my because this is uncomfortable. I just kind of keep thinking about it and doing more thinking and Travis. doing going deeper or whatever. So maybe like I'm, I'm just ripping. Spirits. Like I'm just, no, we're like. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, I'm just riffing here, but like maybe that's it. Maybe is that the that I've got more to think about. There's more, you know, like I need to break this down a little bit further. Analyze maybe you have all the more. information you need. Yeah, maybe it's just time to go. Maybe it's just, maybe time, it's to just time to go. And you know, my last coach. Yourself. Yeah, well, my last coach session. That was one of my big, my last strategic coach session. That was one of my big takeaways. Yeah. Is that it's like, look, you've done the unique ability work. You've you know done who this. You, are. you know who you are. Yeah. And so it's like, you dude, just you go, want. just go do it. Just go do Don't it. Get what you want. Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, you know. You can get what you want if you're willing to ask for what you want. Ah, oh, that's you know? so gold. Say it again. <laughs> you, can think, you can get what you want if you're willing to ask for what you want, right? So, I mean, open mouth gets fed. There's could, a bunch of different ways If to I say could it. drop the mic without ruining the whole <laughs> podcast, I would. Yeah. But that was really good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah right. really good. I know, that's, a, that's another one of those things that I didn't, that's another one that I, I didn't it. say. But. I love it. What else do you want to say, share with this audience about your life, about your lessons, about your the things you're learning? Like, Give some entrepreneurs some thoughts about, like, what you've learned that you feel like is invaluable. Ooh. I think that the, you know, if, if I knew then what I know now, mm. right? Uh, the, yeah. I know we talked about it earlier, but if you are a visionary and you do not have the right integrator. Get your puzzle piece. Dude, that, get your puzzle piece. The yeah. sooner that, like, the sooner that you start. Is there, start, like, an integrator farm? Where can you find them? Dude, I mean, they are hard to find. They and are. it's just, like, and when I have Unicorns. met, when I have met people that, like, I've, I've handed out a copy of, like, you know, Traction and Rocket Fuel to, like, a, you know, a dozen yeah. people that yeah. I'm just, like, dude, you might be one of these people. And I'm, like, <laughs> they are so highly valued in this community. Oh, my you God. You can get, you can, you can make really good money. You can work at a really great company, whatever. But it's, like. For every person out there that's got great ideas that's trying to run yeah. a company, like yeah. for every 10 of those, there's yeah. like one of you. Yeah. And it actually gets like actually 20 to one or something, right? But oh, it's crazy. And crazy. you know, that's yeah. why even as part of Rocket Fuel, so we have the Integrator Master Class, we have the Visionary Master Class. Did you attend that today? No, no, yesterday? No, I didn't. You no, were I here. Yeah, 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 so 
uh, we have also a matching program that we're launching yeah. to help visionaries very find valuable. their integrator. That's very valuable. I mean, that's huge it's because really important. well, I mean, and, and, and here's the other thing I would say is that it's like you, you need to get like if you don't have it, get started. And it's like the the, the first step yeah. in the process is not necessarily that you're going to go out and hire somebody. You got to pay yeah. a bunch of money, but. Yeah. Do the work, and the sooner you get started, the sooner you're going to yeah. find it. And the ch yeah. if, if you find it on your first try, great for you. That's not the way it goes for most people. And it's uh, so just, but the sooner that you start, the sooner that you can that you can find the right puzzle piece. And it's just, it makes such a huge difference. It makes, it's, and it's like, look, it's not for you. It's for your team. Ooh, it's yeah. not for you. It's for your team. Yeah. And it's like, if you, if you're a visionary and you think that you're a great manager, you're, you're probably not. You're probably <laughs> not. And it's just like, just get in, you know, like I said Wake before, up. management is just great managers, great, you know, somebody that's really, really great at the people management aspect. Yeah. You know, building, galvanizing that team, developing those people. It is a rare gift and it's something that your team deserves. It's something that your people deserve. It's like, you know, like that's the company that hopefully you want to create. Good for you. And you, and you are probably not equipped to do it. So go out and just Preach get started. It. Get started. Get started. Get started. Find your um, Tim. That's my guy. He's dude. He's the best. All right. Well, that's amazing. Um, Travis, we have to like end this on our new secret handshake. Oh, the handshake. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I just met him, and you know, this is just really like off the cuff. I don't know. As soon as like we, we like first time we ever shook hands. First this is what it looked ever. like. Totally ready. Yeah. Can we do so it? There. Yeah. Don't blow it. Oh. Yep. <laughs> There you go. You got it. I got it like, yes. kind of close. It was My brain close. got a little scattered. Well, I mean, and we're having to go high because we it got the high, microphones. Yeah, yeah it anyway, was high, it was but pretty, like, that's pretty good. That's right. I give us a B plus. We are on like that. that's really good. bonding. Do you feel it? It's I like do feel it. Right I now. do feel it. Yeah. I know. God, I was meant to talk to you today. Uh, you know, I think so. It's, I was really uh, no seriously. The lessons that you're going through, those are my lessons too, man. Yeah. Well, dude, I think that it's like. One of the things I love about the system is that it's like, look, dude, there's only six problems you can have, right? Six, <laughs> there's, there's, just but, six. Well, there's just, I mean, like, look, is it? We like, say 135. Well, but, but there's, I mean, but six. you can you can put it six into those six components. buckets. You're right. Yeah, I yeah, mean, so like, what type themselves. of problem is it? Is that, yeah. and it gives you a way that you can think about it. And so at the end of the day, it's like, you, you hang out with these people and it's like, look, we're all going through the same stuff, right? I mean, yeah, even though our business is, Interesting, uh, interesting chip I used to have on my shoulder Tell is the me. fact that we like so we're a manufacturing company, and so we deal with stuff. It's yeah. like that, hey, our company's different. You know, we're not in services or we're not in say, you know like we're not some sales training organization or whatever. We oh, there's you know, sales training organizations here. Be careful. I, don't, I mean, well, so th anyway, this was the stupid thing that I used to think that yeah. it's like we're different. Yeah. Well, manufacturing is different for this reason yeah. or that, and it's like, dude, no, it's not. No. You're the same. Like we're the same as they're like. You're in the people business, always. Oh, all of us are in the people business, right? Oh my God. And so, anyway, we're all, but. Read the people book. It's oh, dude, good. it's so good. It's, it's so, good. so good. Say yeah. it again, it's so good. It is so good. It's yeah. really good. The authors are here. Are you ready are to get here. your book signed? I'm ready to get my book signed. I didn't know that we were going to get a free copy, and so I oh kind of feel cheated that I'm I bought sure one. I'm sure you're going to be fine. Uh, Jeez. Anyway, She's spent a couple extra bucks. Come on. Yeah. You're good. Um, Travis, it's been so fun to talk to you yeah, live at the 2024 US Conference in San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. Don't do it. I want to do it so bad. The whale. No, yeah, don't no, say the whale. Say, don't, don't, don't say the whales. X, Y, Z. Don't do yeah. it. It's not appropriate. There's HR roaming or the halls somewhere. This is a place to be open, honest, and vulnerable. Let that freak flag fly. I'm doing um, it. Will you join me in wearing an animal suit? I will not. Place? No, I will not. <laughs> The whole time you're wearing this, I'm just like, that's been the main thought I've had this entire yeah. time. Thank <laughs> I God told I am you it was going to help you get suit. like eased into the conversation yeah. and like be like cool on camera, right? Because you're pretending that I'm in this animal yeah, suit. Yeah, pretending that you're wearing a ridiculous <laughs> animal from jumpsuit. All right. Well, thank you for the audience coming out today for our first ever live US We Run on US podcast. Thank you. We Run on US is available on all major podcast platforms because, like, duh, yeah. why not? It's such a weird thing, except for X, Y, and Z. No, it's everywhere. Follow us so you do not miss an episode, Travis. Do yeah. not miss your own episode. Oh, yeah. You have to play it back, <laughs> see how you did. You can learn more about all things US at EOSWorldwide.com, but all of you are here, so you know about EOS. That's cool. Uh, and don't forget to test drive the five EOS foundational tools and get a free account and try out us1.com. Travis, I'm gonna personally escort you over there. All right. All right, and that's eosone.com. E
O-N-E.com. EOS One is the official software of EOS. It's everything. EOS in one place from the makers of EOS. Signing off, I'm your host, Pam Kosenke. Thank you for connecting with us. Yeah, Travis. thanks for having me. We try to get it. Yeah. Come there, on. There, yeah. there. Wow! Boom, boom! Psh, boom! Yes! There you go. Close! Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs>